white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy. They think if they say it enough, they'll get a pat on the back from Black Lives Matter. Everything is white supremacy. When you have the kind of voter suppression that we've seen all across the country, which is really just about white supremacy. All of them, the whole time, totally irresponsible, inflaming racial tensions to push a political agenda. Is the new Republican America First Caucus just a fancied up name for white supremacy? I don't know, Brian Williams, is it? Is it anything that you don't like that's white supremacy now? Just like anything you don't agree with is misinformation, the destructive, divisive grift of these white allies of the woke left, these race hustlers, is tearing our country apart. And if they had the slightest decency or sense of moral responsibility, they'd stand up to the activists and extremists on their own side, but they won't because they're cowards. Joining me now with Reaction, the co-founder of Speak Georgia, conservative commentator Janelle King, and political analyst Malik Abdul. Janelle, it's just been so infuriating to watch these people who claim to be about racial justice using all this, using these trials to inflame racial division and tensions, exactly the opposite of what we should be seeing happen in this country. Yes, absolutely. And this case wasn't about racial justice. It was about justice, period, and justice for everyone. But the interesting thing is that I have watched the Democratic Party use the weapon of racism to try to move masses of people over and over and over again. And it's just sinister in the very sense of the word, because you take the most hurtful part of our, of our country's past and you continue to bring it up over and over and over again at moments when it's not even justified in order to try to manipulate the masses. And this case was no exception at all. This case had nothing to do with race, nothing to do with racism. It was simply a young boy who was in a situation where he defended himself. And that's just it. If it wasn't for the fact that the narrative outweighed or, or, or uh, uh, the narrative was able to drive the whole story before the trial even started, we wouldn't be talking about this. And that is our issue, and that is the main problem, is that we allow the narrative to be created and formed yes. by these race hustlers and gatekeepers rather than sitting and waiting for facts and listening to the actual situation and what happened. Exactly. So well put, Janelle. Um, and Malik, you know, you could, you know, the, 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 the sinister aspect of what, um, what we saw and what Janelle was talking about there was so highlighted by the way that, you know, these trials, you know, with, with Rittenhouse, oh, that was the wrong, react, the wrong result because it didn't fit the narrative. But in the Georgia case, just this past week, oh, well, that's the right result, obviously. It's not about justice, it's about their narrative. Yeah, so uh, what, what the Democratic Party and the media at large, they're really afraid of people like me, you know, p someone who left the Democratic Party in 2016 and supported Donald Trump, in large part because I was tired of this game that Democrats play all the time. You played an, an entire montage of what I actually called the for-profit race-hustling industry. And it wasn't just the people, our right. liberal white friends, who were actually out there doing that. If you listen to the, the actual president of the NAACP, he could compared the Rittenhouse trial to the Emmett Till trial and said that the Emmett Till trial was actually worse than the Rittenhouse trial. This is what the for-profit race industry does. And we know the horrors of our um, country. Yes, we are dealing now with the vestiges of racism. But the thing is, is that we have come so far in what the Democratic Party and the people on the left and the media narrative, they want to keep this narrative of victor and victim. And that's where they want to keep black people at the bottom end of that scale to make us constantly feel that we are in a state of oppression against the evil white man who's around the corner ready to just do us some dirty justice. And keep in mind, it isn't just our white, um, this isn't just white people, this is actually reserved for white conservatives, not their white liberal friends like yes. Joe Biden who goes around telling black people that unless you support him, then you ain't black. That's what the Democratic Party is, and we're tired of it. It is disgusting. Mm -hmm. It's so amazing you just said that, because I was literally about to take almost word for word how you ended there and put it straight over to Janelle and say, you come on Fox News and you say what you do, and that's what they accuse you of, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, like Malik said, we are the biggest threat to the Democratic Party because we can't be told lies and all these stories around our community and, our, and what our community has gone through. We know. And the thing about it is, at the end of the day, we have to remember that, that the left 
is a group of people who claim that they're fighting for justice for all. But it's not justice for all. It's justice for those who believe like them and those who act like them. Because whenever, if you want to say justice for all, we don't have to march for that. We don't have to fight that. We don't have to riot for that. You know why? Because we already have it. It's called the Constitution. and It allows equal rights for each and every one of us. And that is what we all can get behind as Americans. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.